Welcome to another session of Demo Mondays. My name is Augustus Kligis and shortly about Demo Mondays. So Demo Mondays is a video series which I broadcast on Mondays and I invite creators and co-founders of different softwares uh, and they are presenting us their products. They show um, uh, what how it looks inside and this is the perfect opportunity for you to see how the different Amazon tools look like and decide if it is a good fit for you. And today on this show, we have Amaze Owl. So Amaze Owl is uh, presented by co-founder Bob Rogers. Hello, Bob. Hi. Bob, can you tell shortly what is Amaze Owl and what problems does it solve for Amazon sellers? Sure. So Amaze Owl was created to help people at the very beginning of their journey in uh, private label, uh, the private label uh, adventure. And um, the first thing is that we help to identify high potential products and and the marketplaces that they're selling, they're selling in. So um, that's the that's that's how we began, and then we re realized that there was a lot more that we could do, also for people as they get more into their into their research and and even after they start selling. So primarily started with research, uh, uh, finding potential products to sell. Um, and now it's it's become more of a um, sort of data analysis for also for active sellers. Okay, I wanted to ask um, what kind of um, Amazon seller you are targeting. It sounds like it's it, it's a good fit for a beginner seller and also for advanced. Is it true? Yeah. So we've we've had a lot of um, a lot of beginners who are just starting their journey. Um, historically because we started with a really interesting price point which was free um, and uh, over time we've also found that we have intermediate so people who have become active sellers and even some advanced sellers what we find with really advanced sellers is they have a particular way of doing things and um, maybe they just want the data and uh, want to crunch it themselves but um, certainly for those who, you know, are, uh, you know, a good stage along the journey and they have one or two products live, uh, but haven't been doing this for years and years, uh, they're, they're finding a lot of value from a Maisel. And before we go into the real demo, can you also tell on which marketplaces uh, your software works? Because it's a very important question for international sellers. Sure. So we've made some big progress on that side. Uh, we started off uh, just with the U.S. and then we added the U.K. and uh, Canada. Of course, I'm Canadian, so we had to add that. Um, Germany, a very big market, is also uh, is also live. We have France as well, and we're just about to uh, launch Italy, India, and Mexico. Uh, publicly, they're in private beta right now. In the next few days, they'll be going, they'll be going, uh, be fully available on our site. Great, sounds good. So it seems you are reaching out. Uh, I mean, you are a good fit for a lot of sellers around the world. Interesting uh, thing about Amaze Owl is, is I think that uh, your software is not a Chrome extension; is a real so uh, desktop app, right? Yeah, um, exactly. So that is one of the things that's quite different about our about our software. And um, I personally, as I mentioned to you, I personally prefer this environment because it, it's um, kind of a container where uh, all of the research takes place. So it's a it's a desktop app for for a Windows and for um, for Mac. And uh, once you install it, you just log in from there. It acts very much like a browser. It has a lot of browser functionalities, but it allows us to do some additional things. Like for example, uh, you can do now um, updating in the background of, of your data. So you don't have to wait around when you want to refresh data. It just, uh, it'll, it'll do it on a schedule. 
as long as the as long as your app is 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 open. So um, you should be able to see my screen now. Yes, we can see. Okay, I see that I did. I was. I actually I wanted to, as a joke, show you a, a garlic press, but I I seem to have deleted the garlic press. Um, so this is where the, I, I'm starting with our potential product screen because this is sort of where you collect things that you have. Um, you know that you sort of the first stage. Uh, our our uh, software appeals to three different groups or three different use cases. Let's say the first is you have little or no idea of what you would like to sell on Amazon, so you're pretty much a newbie. And then the second scenario is you may already know what you what you know what you're planning to sell, but you haven't gone live yet. And then the third is that you're already you're already selling. Uh, something actively on Amazon, and they have somewhat different needs. So I'm going to start with the first one, and there are three. There, are, there are two primary ways that you can enter, um, and here you can see the marketplaces that we have live. But there are three fundamental ways that you can um, start doing research. One is you can just start searching by keyword. The second is you can look at the bestsellers list, and the third is the product database. So. Um, Product database is uh, is part of our play, paid plan, so we have a freemium model. Uh, most of the app is actually free, but if you uh, want to get access to the product database, it costs extra. And the main attraction of the product database is that it's much quicker. Um, the other advantage of it is that it's um, it helps you if you have no idea what you what you want to get into and just want to see what sells. So I put in a word because I was thinking of a theme for today and thought, uh, you know, meditation is a nice theme for, for, for research. And this sort of falls into a little bit about, you know, where I think the, you know, the sweet spot is when you're doing this kind of work is to try and find something where you have at least some interest because as you do more market, so product research, it helps a lot for you to be, have a more critical eye. So I was just looking at this earlier today and one of the first things that came up was was interesting that I th thought we could explore a little further and that's a, um, a singing bowl. So uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of, uh, heard of singing bowl but they use them in meditation and, in, and also in yoga. And um, so this is one way that you could start uh, and you could find this. This is like the shortcut route. Um, the other way that you could find this product is from from searching on Amazon, as I mentioned. And you would do that here. And if you knew this, you could you could have put in meditation. Um, but let's just move things a little quicker and say we're looking for a singing bowl. And so when you're searching live, you're actually uh, the the app is is um, searching through all of the listings and is looking for certain things that identify it as signals that it's got a high potential. Now, the, the on this page there is nothing, and the reason is and and it's very likely that that there will be nothing if I keep going this way because um, the preset settings. Um, for for a mazel when you're searching probably this product is too heavy so you can override these and you can see in the settings for each one of the markets that you can uh, personalize this and so um, you can change the weight or or size or the the you know the dollar range of what you're looking for we have defaults that are kind of helping people to look for the 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 most common product ca characteris uh, char characteristics for selling on on Amazon, but let's say let's override this a little bit and say we're we're willing to you know go up to three pounds, um, then you would see likely you're going to see some different results when we when we go back here. So this is the sorry. Go ahead. Uh, one question. It uh, mm -hmm. it looks like you're using a browser, but uh, just to that everyone is that it's clear to everyone. It's not really a browser. It's a browser inside your application, right? 
Correct. So it does work a lot like a browser, and uh, it, it's uh, you know the, the the application helps to um, first of all it helps for speed. Second of all, it keeps the problem that I have of um, uh, tab overload, and um, the you know the the third reason is that you can run things in the background. Like I said, the the updates, but it's you know you could put in here and you could start browsing the web through here, um, but these these controls are actually within the app, and actually you can access our you can access Amazel through through the browser. It just won't allow you to do the searching, so you can find the things you've collected and um, but you can't do uh, the active searching on the on the website. So. I'm going to just pick one of these. It's still, uh, this one, the price and the BSR are not quite right. But I'm going to use this as an example where you can change settings, um, find products that are interesting for you. So these settings are, are for somebody who's looking for a larger uh, volume. But what I've found often is that if you're also interested in finding a product that maybe sells five or ten a day, um, this can also be uh, this can also be very interesting to you. So let's go back to the um, to the uh, potential products and just a moment. So here we've collected this now. One of the things that people find useful with Amazel is actually that you can keep things organized. So now you know that this is here and um, you have some further data. You can see that this product is doing um, approximately three sales a day. Um, these are approximate values, but um, seems that through our users generally are communicating that they're, they're pretty they're pretty accurate. So this is the first stage, which is sort of like collecting things into a basket, and it's a short list. But it's by you know by no means it's the end of your process. You have a lot left to do, and risk as much as possible, so that by the time you do decide that you want to um, you know contact a supplier to get these uh, get this product made for you, that um, that you know your chances are really good that you're you're getting into a market that has demand and that it also has room for uh, additional players. So I'm going to explain what the next stage is, and this is where Amazel starts uh, really showing how it's uh, how it's unique. Um, we're going to convert this, let's say it's a representative product, into actually a um, into what we call a tracked product. And this is actually not really a product anymore, but it's actually a marketplace. So I, I chose Singing Bowl. Um, it's a good idea to choose something fairly general when you're creating a track product because that's you can add more keywords after, but it's sort of the, the way that this, uh, uh, you know, that the marketplace is called. And um, I'll show you a little bit more about how you can add keywords later on. So what we did here now is uh, Amazel went through and identified the the key competitors who are playing with with in in the singing bowl space. And before I go and look at the competitors, I'm going to do a few more things. The other thing that we do is at this stage is is bring in external data um, because it's really valuable to know. You know what is the what's the outside market saying? So we have incorporated Merchant Words. You don't need to pay for a Merchant Words uh, account in order to get this data. It's just taking the first five rows, uh, the most common searches related to Singing Bowl, and so you can see that's very healthy monthly searches. Um, and you know that's so far that's a very good sign. So we're just saving this data at this point. Um, starting to, you know, create a, a clearer picture. Another one that is really useful that I, I think a lot of people are, are using already uh, is um, Google Trends. Now, this is interesting. Um, 
this looks like actually this would be a bit of a caution because uh, or a, a warning sign because it looks like it's very seasonal and um, what's weird about it is that the seasonality happens in February uh, another thing is that it looks like actually this is is reached its peak and started dropping so these are some things that you're you're again you're just collecting information at this point you haven't made any decision either way but you're starting to get a, a clearer picture. So far, mm. demand looks really good uh, for this product. Uh, sorry, were you going to say? Yes. Yeah, so what do you mean we are collecting information? You mean when we click the button in the potential products that we are tracking this product? Uh, this is what you mean that we are col now start collecting some accumulating information long term? Or? Yeah. So the, the best way to imagine this is that you've converted the original product that you found let's say it's like a beacon that is indicating this marketplace is interesting and then what we did is we built the marketplace around it to show okay let me see what the marketplace looks like that that this product is playing in because the truth is that it's more important to know the marketplace than the product because it may be that a product is successful in spite of its marketplace because it has lots of reviews and it's an entrenched player. It's one that's dominated by, you know, major brands or something like that. So if you take that just in isolation, its performance is, is it, it says something, but it's much more, um, it gives much deeper data when you start looking at what what is the environment that 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 is the product selling in because you're not going to sell that product you're going to sell something similar hopefully you're going to sell something that's a little bit better or that's improved uh, an improvement on uh what people are you know what what people are finding normally otherwise you're you're competing in a in a you know in a commodity space so what I, what I mean is by this point, you're no longer looking at a product in isolation. You're looking at the marketplace. And this will be a lot clearer in a second. I just want to, I want to fill this out a little bit more. Um, here, this is starting to get into this, uh, the idea that, you know, you're talking about competitors. There are 15 strong competitors out of a total of 4,000, almost 4,500. Don't let this number alarm you because as you've probably found in Amazon, the second from the second page even of a lot of searches products start coming up that are not related so it just means that there are a total of that many results for a singing bowl but you'll see even in this example we'll find products that that don't have much uh much to do with what we were originally looking for so the main thing is that there are 15 competitors generally people say hey you know something Below five probably indicates the market is too thin. Above 20, uh, strong competitors. And I'll tell you what that means by strong competitors in a second. It's going to be hard for you to get on the first page, which is which is where you want to be. Um, the other the other thing that we've you know we've looked at at this point is the median reviews, and um, this is an indicator of how hard is it going to be for me to kind of get in there and get established. Is this a place where everybody has loads of reviews and I'm going to have a hard time as a new newcomer. This actually looks pretty good. This actually looks very good. So, um, uh, so, so far this is a pretty, pretty good other than what I see here. This, uh, this seasonality is a little bit strange. Um, so before I get into the competitors, I'll just go into a couple of other things. I'm going to do this pretty quickly. The um, buy price idea is to allow you to do kind of a reality check of whether you can make um, make money out of this. And um, we sort of kept it semi-manual because, you know, you have to use your common sense when you're looking here because you see it's $33, but actually the product that we, um, that we were researching right now, I think is only $15. So this is just taking the average from the first five results but you can override this and you you're encouraged to and as you know on alibaba you have a lot of different uh you have a lot of information that, with big wide ranges and what i would just say at this point is let's say 
that this product is is around five dollars this i'm so oversimplifying but you would have to do more research to figure out um and even start initial negotiation before you really know exactly what this product is is going for but this is just this is just for the purposes of this of this uh this demo so the reason we did that is in order for you to load the the fba um uh, calculator and um now i've discovered that this is this is the first thing that i would be uh, wary of is that this product because of its weight probably is indicating to me that it's going to be very hard doing FBA to make any money. So that's where this whole idea of weight and why we filtered out. Um, probably all of you were hoping, oh yeah, I'm gonna go and sell some uh, singing bowls. But actually I used this example partly because you saw that our tool actually didn't really, uh, didn't really suggest it, at least when you were going through Hunt for Products. Um, because this is actually a hard one to make money on if you're doing FBA. And that's mainly because of the costs associated with uh, related to the weight. So I'm going to save this anyway. That there is a, a thin margin um, available, <clears throat> but um, that would be a major red flag. And you can see it's not it's not getting a very good score. Uh, if you thought that you could do something better than five dollars, or if you thought that you could, um, you know, maybe do FBM and find a way of, of of avoiding this this issue of weight then maybe go ahead but this would already be uh, for me a major major red flag to not not uh, not pursue this product or look much more closely at it um yep and on this screen the median reviews and median price is it, are you taking this from these 15 competitors correct that's exactly right. And you'll see, I'm actually going to clean things up a little bit in a second because these competitors were taken because they were showing up. So we identified the strong competitors. I'll just go there because I keep teasing you. Um, so we are taking these competitors because they have um, a very low BSR and we cut off at, at 6,000. I just set the minimum reviews as zero, but you can also use this as a further qualifier for for a strong competitor. So that's saying that, um, you know, everybody in the space that's doing under 6,000 BSR would be considered a strong competitor. And um, if you go through here, so the first few products look appropriate. As you get more specific, so for example, this is a product where it may not make sense in the, in the example that I gave, but this one is actually very small. And it may be that you can make it work with with um, FBA, um, you know, with a with a smaller one. So this would be where you would look more closely. And in that case, then if you're looking specifically at attacking the the small singing bowl space, then you would remove these other competitor because they're not relevant to you. Um, because actually you're really only competing against small bulls. But here's an example of a product that just is not what you're selling at all, so you would remove it, right? And now you have, um, you should have 14 um, competitors. Here's another one where maybe you just don't plan to compete with because you're looking at more of the like traditional um, uh, Tibetan ones. So we can remove that. Whoops, I accidentally did that. Uh, didn't want to do that, but that allows me to show you that you've saved them all in here and you can bring them back out if you decide you change your mind. So I think I want to put that one back in there. Um, but this is um, the ignored list and that's where um, products that didn't make the cut go to die. And this list will actually, products will come back into your competitors list if you, if you were to, for example, raise the, the BSR. So let me just quickly check here. Yeah, so this is for a simplification. Let's say that that this is my competitive set and there are, you know, 13 guys that are on my radar and, um, and, and the rest of them I can kind of ignore. So that's actually pretty good. Like I say, the general kind of feeling is that you want to have below 20 and above five. Um, but let's go back here. So 
the numbers have updated slightly because the scenario has changed, but um, it still looks pretty. It looks pretty good here, and it still looks pretty bad here because we didn't we we didn't find a solution for that. And when the time is uh, passing, what kind of information uh, I see updated here long term by the application automatically? Yeah, so this is a great question. Every time that you update this, so I wouldn't need to do it now because it's just been 11 minutes since I collected this data, but we launched a new feature that allows you to, to automatically update. And um, once you set this, then it will go and, and, and do the shopping on a daily basis. And actually, all of these numbers can potentially change because your competitor list can change. And um, that means that you have to go back in and make sure that the new players that have entered there are still relevant. Um, so you need to do a little bit of, of maintenance, but that also keeps you connected to the market to understand what's happening. Um, what's even more interesting if we go into here is that over time, we have a number of, of different metrics that we're tracking for these products. And one of them is your keyword ranking, which you probably know is pretty important. Um, so over time, you will start, you know, be able to see whether um, your, you know, the, the competitors are moving up, whether the trend is moving toward, you know, higher uh, listing or if they're moving further down the page and we look 10 pages deep so you can see uh, you can see competitors quite far out um, these so just an idea there's a there's a kind of a um, legend here so you can see what these symbols mean but essentially green this is a light increase you can see actually where it went it went from uh, the eighth position on the first page to the sixth position on the first page um, this one moved down, so it went from the six to the eight. So these two uh, switched positions, and um, equals just means that they they're steady there. So this I, I'm I'm doing this a little out of order, but if we go back uh, to the uh, to the to the main view, I can start adding keywords, and then this starts becoming more interesting. Let's put small singing. Okay, and I'm going to add this more long tail keyword. And like I was saying before, each one of these are actually marketplaces. So singing bowl is a marketplace, but small singing bowl is actually a different marketplace because if somebody really wants a small singing bowl, that's what they're going to put in, in, in Amazon. And that's, that's their, that's what they're looking for. Um, this is interesting, much lower search volume, lower number of competitors. Um, you know, the idea is to, that you keep doing this and, you know, we help you to see what the, what keywords are the most common that are associated. We use Amazon's autocomplete to help you with understanding that. And you're just building up the, the what is the picture of this marketplace is it are there a number of different keywords and entry points for for this product or most people searching using you know just a, a few different search terms um, and if you go back into here you'll see that the, the keyword ranking has also added this additional column so the small singing bowl also has its own ranking. And what's common is that if you see a big, a big, uh, you know, somebody who's really doing well on Amazon, they're the ones who have, even if you've put five or 10 or whatever different keywords, they're ranking for all of them. So they're doing a good job. Like this guy's missing out pretty serious time because he, he doesn't come up for, for singing bowl. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't exist for, for somebody uh, looking at singing bowl, which is which is a big mistake. So can, can you remind what does it mean? These numbers four slash one. Yeah, sorry. Um, we're going to try and make this. Uh, uh, you know, we're going to improve the the UI so that it's clearer. But this is the sixth position on the first page that I'm looking at here. So that one, and here fifteenth position of the first page, and trend is 
going up and you can see in that uh, pop-up you can see the numbers you know that they in this this product in increased one position uh, since the last time it was searched which was uh, which was November 2nd so this is why you do the searching on a daily basis is because somehow at some point this product came up in a search and we collected this data, this past data. Um, but once you start searching on a daily basis, then you'll, you'll be able to see a much clearer picture um, of, of what, uh, what's happening in the marketplace. Is that, is that clarify? Yes. Yes. No, it's yeah. Clear. yeah. So other things you can do here, um, you've got, you've got statistics for the, for the marketplace. Um, this also brings out some interesting things. This is kind of a weird looking graph because obviously, you know, higher is, as you're getting towards the zero, you're actually in a better, better shape. Um, most, you know, most of the time you see people are, or competitors are pretty established and they are not moving a lot, but then you also see some really strange movements like this product is all over the place. And um, one of the coolest things about Amazel is, is, is the additional layer that you can go in. And this becomes more and more useful as you, as you get closer to launching and especially once you've, once you've launched your product. So I can actually go in here and see what, what is this, what is this uh, competitor doing with their listing and what impact is it having on, on the, on the BSR? So, uh, you know, this is, this looks like a, it's actually the same graph that's used for a Google, Google finance. And, um, it's really showing in a similar way. So these drops are actually, this is, this is better, right? The, the, the lower you are, the better in BSR. And you can see, well, what did this guy do here? What's D? Um, and you know, what did, what did this, uh, um, what change did this competitor make that caused this, uh, caused this change? So that's not much of a surprise. This, this is a, ch this is a shift in price. So that's often a really strong, um, motivator for, to increase prices or to increase sales, especially in a competitive marketplace. But you can see there are other things happening here. Um, this, was not something that the the, uh, the the competitor changed, but rather what can change in their listing is their their rating dropped, um, and this can also sometimes does show an impact. It did here a little bit, um, but sometimes it doesn't, and that's where you start learning about your about your marketplace and about competitors. And you can see also competitors do interesting things, like they will update their their listing information. Sometimes it's different. Uh, sometimes it's not, and they're just reloading the same information. So there are a lot of strategies going on, and you can really start understanding your competitors, your key, you, you know your key competitors. And so that means that you know by the time you you you're actually you're actually live and selling, these are these are guys that that you're familiar with. Um, and if a new one comes in, you can say, okay, this is a new guy. Let's see what he's up to. And if he has a clue or not, or maybe he's using an auto, you know, repricer, or maybe he's done, doing nothing. Um, that's the other thing you can see here is that this, uh, listing does do quite a bit with their pricing, but we often see, uh, we often see, uh, competitors that are virtually, they do nothing with their pricing and just leave it. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, as well. A question about this history. Uh, mm -hmm. If I add a product today, will you pull the information about the history of the product or not? Uh, I mean, this history is probably collected depending on the date you add it to your software. Yeah, so what, what happens is, is that um, we're constantly, so we take more than a million listings a day. We take data from more than a million listings a day. So just from the pure randomness, we are starting to get, you know, we have some fairly consistent data for more common products. If you start going really obscure, then we don't have that data. But once you start tracking that product, then you will have that data on a, on a consistent basis. And um, so this competitor, we have data from a while because, 
you know, we were accumulating it over time. Um, but uh, there may be some other competitors where we don't have the same depth or time time frame. Um, but once you start doing your own updating uh, for your own niche, then you will really start filling all those gaps in so you will understand your particular competitors really well. So that means if I add a new competitor product today, and if you have data in your own database, I might see the historical changes backwards. Yeah, and um, I won't say most of the time, but a good good portion of the time, you will already get a very good picture even right from the start. Yeah. And um, how you said like, um, if you update, if you update, does it mean I have to go manually click the button? And if I don't log into Amaze Owl for one week, uh, some things will not be updated? Um, this is this is partly true. So um, first of all, we have the, the, the functionality, the auto uh, update functionality. And that means that it will, I turn this on. So tomorrow, as long as the app is open, um, and because it's an app, you don't have to, as long as it's open, you're logged in. So you don't, that's the, the kind of the nice thing about it. Um, it's easier for you to keep track of whether it's on or not. So it does need to be on, but it only needs to be on for, you know, uh, depending on how many keywords you have, because we do it quite slowly in the background uh, in order not to irritate Amazon. Um, so if you have a lot of keywords, it may take a few hours. If you only have one keyword, it may take half an hour. Um, and, uh, then you, you, you know, it's kind of set and forget and you don't have to worry about it. We're also collecting data, um, in the background, but, um, this, you know, can't, it can't guarantee you that for singing bowl that we're collecting this data in the background, uh, it's more actually for our product database and uh, making sure that the product database has fresh results. So if you're really talking about a specific um, product, then um, you should have the app on uh, in order, you know, to initiate the auto updates. But if you're, you know, if you're serious about this business and especially as you're getting closer to the time when you're, um, you know, when you're gonna buy the, the wholesale product and, and definitely, when you're getting close to launch, you should be looking at this on a daily basis. And once you're selling on Amazon, I think people <laughs> look a lot more often than just once a day. Okay, so it's good to know that you just need to keep the app open. I don't need to click additional buttons for updating. No, that's that's what we added here. And uh, you're going to start seeing more information that's connected to what's new in the marketplace. But already now, you just set the auto update and you know that if you go in here um, around the same time tomorrow, it should already be done. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Paul is asking, if I add more keywords, the competitors increase what happens to yeah, that number in relation exactly. to the attractiveness of the market. Exactly. So that's part of the reason why you want to be really thorough with this, with this stage. Um, let's say this is a meditation bowl. Meditation meditation bowl. Let's just say meditation bowl. That's why this, this exercise, which seems kind of manual, um, we're, we're thinking of ways to, automate this more, but it's actually pretty useful for you to go through this exercise because it, it, it ingrains in your mind what's, you know, what's important and what isn't. So, so I don't have search volume on this, um, but you can see already that there are, there are actually quite a few strong competitors. So that will have, that will have influenced your, your competitors list. And, that's why normally you go through and accumulate as many keywords as you can um, before you go through this exercise because you can see this doesn't fit. So I'm taking it out or at least I don't think it fits. I don't think this fits either. So, and then this is for example, music. This is where you kind of get like breakup of the results and this is not, this is, this is Tibetan singing bowls music. Um, which is not the product that I'm selling at all. So you want to remove those out of there. But exactly, every time you do this, now this is 16, even after uh, culling them out. So picture is changing and that's 
you know, do a thorough job with this. So you go in, you know, first of all, knowing, yeah, you've got competitors, but also, yeah, I've got a lot of different ways that I can, um, yeah, I can sell my product. And the cool thing is that um, we also have a keywords feature where we're essentially doing, this is sort of a frequency uh, tag cloud of how often these words are coming up in listings. And this is sort of making the assumption that the, most of the people know what they're doing when they make their listings, but you can get actually quite deep here and you can start collecting also what are, you know, what do they have in their, in their bullets? And you can even do that. What do they have in their descriptions? So as you add more um, competitors from different keywords, then you're starting to get a, a, a much richer idea of the keywords that you want to use in your own listing and, and, you know, even if, you know, even when you're doing your advertising and you can download this so you can, you know, do, do further analysis. And like I say, use it when you're building your listing. Okay. The Paul, Paul says that question, he didn't get the answer because he was actually wondering what happens with the number in relation to the attractiveness of the market. Ah, okay. So let's go back here and see what, what happened here. Generally, as you add more keywords, you have to keep your eye on this manually. So if this turns into 40, then you need to start thinking about whether this is a good idea. It will also probably give you uh, a, a warning um, to say you're starting to get a lot of competitors. But outside of that, as you um, as you increase the number of, of keywords, you're normally going to get better a better score for demand, and you're going to get a better score for for uh, uh, ease of entry because you're finding that there's more, the, there are more opportunities and uh, there, there are just more sales going on. So, and that's actually what you want to find. That's what you're trying to find out is uh, what are the other pathways that I, you know, with this one product that a, uh, a consumer can find me. So the, you know, the, that, that these, each one of these is, is, is a separate marketplace. And if you have, if your product is versatile enough and you've been smart enough that you're visible in 20 different marketplaces, um, then, then your, your situation is stronger. And on this screen, there is the easy ease of entry. So it's your, yep. your own local, uh, uh, scoring of the keyword. Can you explain which number is good, which number is, is warning? Sure. So, Ease of entry means that how, how competitive is the marketplace? And so we look at a few things. The first is how many competitors there are. The second is how much of the revenue is concentrated on a limited number of competitors, meaning are there some big, big fish that are eating almost everything. So it could be that there's quite a bit of business there, but it's going to be hard to get in there. And then the third one, which is also very important is the number of reviews. So if you have, um, let's go back here because then you can see this better. This still actually is quite good. And um, uh, the, we're three co-founders. The other co-founder is actually uh, the, the, the real Amazon uh, guru and he's 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 actually quite uh, I was surprised he he says that up to even over over 500 reviews median reviews is okay um, because his goal he, he looks at it is is this a number that I could achieve in a year a year from now could I be could I be part of this club in a year so if this number and it sometimes is uh, depending on what you know what you're looking at if this number is like 800 or a thousand or more median reviews then you're probably talking about a marketplace that doesn't have a lot of room for you um that they're just competitors are so entrenched and um so that's what the, this is this is based on that's why it says um you know reviews and and listings is is about how the um how built out the the listings are of the competitors, meaning have they just put in one photo and there's almost no text or is it a multimedia extravaganza? 
um, uh, harder to harder to judge, but um, sometimes you do find that there are marketplaces where or you know products where there's relatively little content, and that means that if you were to do a better job, you could you could outsell them on that level too. Okay, makes sense. Thanks. Yeah. So, so I've given you the first scenario, kind of brought you up to the point of let's say you started from from zero, but let's say you didn't start from zero, and um, you actually already have a um, a good idea of what you what you want to do. So, adi an additional way that you could enter, let's say you already know, because in the first example. Um, I put in singing bowl, but I also put in meditation. But now I really know I really know that I have a small singing bowl. And then you can create your marketplace this way. And I just bypassed the whole idea. I'm gonna end up with a second listing that looks similar to the to the first one, but I started in a different way. Um, in the sense that I didn't do, I already knew what I what I had um, and what I'm buying. And when you move to the next stage, uh, meaning that you actually become an active seller, you can further fill out that that uh, that profile. So let's go and pick a product from here. Let's let's just be realistic and say let's take this one because it's a small one. So I can open this in the browser and then I'll take the Essen from here. Can you still see? Yes, yes, we can see your okay. browser. And... Okay. Okay. So now I'm back in the app and I can add my product. So let's say the scenario is that um, I, you know, I, I went through the whole process and it's, day zero of selling on Amazon and now I'm listed on Amazon. I can actually put my uh, myself in here and then all of a sudden, you know, the context becomes a lot more relevant because uh, now we're talking about my product in relation to the other, uh, the other competitors that I had been researching. Actually, it would make more sense to, to put it in here because we have a lot more we have a lot more information in this one. I just use this for, you know, the, the one that, that I created just to show you that there are other ways of getting in here. You, you don't have to go through the whole process of, um, you know, searching for potential products or going to the product database. If you already know that, you know, you've got small, a small singing bowl that's on, a, on, the, on the way to Amazon, you don't have to go through that. You can create your marketplace already. And as, you know, as things get more, uh, you know, uh, once you have launched, then you can add your product into that existing um, existing marketplace. So here, if you go down, uh, you can see this is my product here. And then in the keywords ranking, which we've added more since the last time. So we have more keywords. You can see where you're ranked here. So you're doing if this was your product, you're doing okay, but you, there's room for improvement uh, for sure. And as you add more keywords, then you'll see there are more opportunities available to you. Okay, so this is when I am already selling the pro existing product. Uh, it's not that, not that I'm waiting uh, the product to come. I already have to sell in order to get some data and comparison with competitors. Yeah, it's just an, it's a different way. It's a different entry point to the same to the same data. So, um, the, you know, the first example I gave you was I had little or no idea, but in this case, I in this case I created a mar a marketplace without a representative product. I just said I know I'm going to sell a small singing bowl, and then once you're live, you add your you add your small singing bowl to to the to the competitive uh, uh, to the marketplace, and you see where you're where you're at, and and at that point, then you want to know that information on a daily basis, at least. 
So uh, we've, we've got a, a bunch of other things that we're working on right now. A lot of features that are related to once you become an active seller. So uh, there is no requirement to connect to using, um, using uh, Seller Central right now. But in the future, we will add this because it will um, make it a lot easier for you to be able to see your, your performance and, and have some, uh, you know, visualizations of, of, of how you're performing relative to your competitors. Obviously, for your competitors, those are estimates. Um, but uh, like I say, as, as long as the, as long as you're not talking about uh, products that are doing huge volumes, the, the feedback we've had from our users, uh, these these estimates are are pretty accurate. Um, and so at least you're getting, you know, a pretty good idea of how you're doing relative to to your um, to your biggest competitors. And we're also going to be offering more functionality that really allows you to zero in on, let's say, three key competitors that you want to that you want to monitor more closely and you'll get some reports and you know kind of be alerted when something changes related to to those key competitors mm -hmm. and we have a question can you modify the order of the products as they appear under the tracked products ah um so you can you can't you don't have complete freedom but you can change the sort so you can change it to um you know if you want to see the ones that are making you the most money um for example i had a f this was another example that i used and this is obviously looking much better than our uh, bowl um we are going to offer in the future the uh, the opportunity to star them so that they will come up to the top. This is for for track products and also when you're still in potential products, so that you'll be able to you know usually what happens is you accumulate quite a few products, but there are only a few that you really want to dig dig deeper on, and um, so we're going to have that add that to make it easier for people to you know to be able to easily find the ones that they're looking at most often. Mm -hmm. So at the top, I see several tabs. We went, you demonstrated as potential products tab, tracked products. Yeah. At the beginning. Hunt for products was um, searching on the Amazon site. Yeah. And the last tab, uh, the before the last products database. Yeah. So that was, the, I, I did, but I sort of went, went, that was what I covered at the very beginning. So this is like the shortcut approach. If you, okay. um, so the hunt for products is kind of a manual where you're going on Amazon and you have to go through each page. Um, you know, this is, this is actually useful when you're really, really specific and you already know what you want. You want to see if there's an opportunity and you already have an idea, but if you have little or no idea, then the product database is, uh, is a great place to start because I can take this out of here and you'll see that you, you'll end up with some really random things that you never would have thought of otherwise. Um, some of them are not relevant, um, but as you, you know, as you go through here, you'll see things that you never would have thought of. And it, it depends on your strategy. You know, um, if you are somebody like me, I, it's important for me to be able to, uh, connect with the product that I'm selling. So I probably will look in certain areas that are connected to my interests or my knowledge, but um, others may be more interested. I mean, this is an example, uh, probably not a good idea because it's pretty oversaturated, but um, this is an example of a product that most people can relate to, uh, you know, an insulated, uh, uh, insulated cup. So you just get, you, you'll get, ideas from here um, and they help when you're kind of lost for for uh, a place to start yours it's already sort of a short list of products that uh, are already indicating that they have uh, strong strong potential strong sales potential of course you still have to go through the 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 exercise of digging deeper and um, you should not 
uh, underestimate how important that is because there are only a few key stages in this journey that you you need to get right otherwise you're you're going to have a hard time succeeding and one of those is if you pick a product uh idea in a marketplace that's already like for example if somebody did their research in isolation and found uh fidget spinners um and didn't look any deeper and they say oh fidget spinners that looks good uh everybody who knows fidget spinners knows that that's that's a titanic going down so <laughs> um you know it's really important to do that do that deeper research and that's that's you know that's one of the things i think that amazel is is particularly strong on is allowing you to do that deeper research all right and can you set up different settings scenarios scenarios of different settings or using your software yeah so uh, like i said the um the setting the default settings that you can you can always return to them so you can play with any any of these uh any of these metrics here and you can see it's broken down into the different categories for bsr so when you're just starting out you probably don't know what you know what bsr you're you're aiming for but let's say for example you've been researching baby products for a while and you are saying okay i th i think i'd be comfortable with selling five as opposed to 10 or 15 a day so i can increase this to say four thousand four thousand okay, and then you can you can update this and when you go to hunt for products it's going to allow those products that also have a bsr as high as as 4000 to be considered interesting to you otherwise they just are grayed out and um, same for price you may decide uh, we put 15 in there some people think that 12 or even 10 dollars is still doable if you go much below 10 dollars then you start paying amazon too much so you can play with these. We set the defaults in such a way that they kind of, they allow you to get a good idea to start. Um, and when you want to optimize and essentially save time so that you're really zeroing in, then um, you can change these afterwards. And you can see it's, it's broken down for each marketplace because each marketplace is different. Currencies are obviously different, but the marketplaces themselves also are different. And you know, through your experience, you can say, okay, there are too many potential products, uh, too many high potential products coming up. I want to be more. Uh, I want to be more picky. Then you know, you play most likely with BSR. You're gonna you're gonna rein in the BSR. Say, I think for BSR in this market, I only want to look at a baby of a thousand. Uh, maximum a thousand then and then you're only going to see high you know your the high potential products are only going to come up when they're when they're showing a bsr below a thousand and what happens if you do an update on your i guess potential product no on the so if you update the you know the app updates the information mm -hmm. and how this uh, default settings are reflected yeah so the default settings are really for the first stage where you're accumulating these uh, potential products so the the kind of the short list of of uh, product ideas and once you've accumulated them then they 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 sort of stay there and um the projected um revenues and that kind of thing will change but they will remain in your they won't disappear from your potential products uh the, these settings are just for that stage once you've started tracking uh, a product then um you know you will have for example because you're no longer tracking a product you're tracking a marketplace let's just use this um this as an example so we had a cutoff for the competitors of six thousand and so here six thousand is the is the cutoff and it's quite likely that some of your competitors are going to get knocked out of there because they're not meeting that. And some new competitors who were, you know, either they, I don't know, they ran out of inventory or um, 
they are new players, they all of a sudden will come in. So this is constantly changing based on this, uh, this BSR threshold. But those settings that I showed you on the first page, those are just for um, for the first stage of the of the uh, you know uh, accumulating products to for product ideas. Okay, all right. So you covered three different, uh, basically three different Amazon seller scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe you, in uh, 30 seconds, you can just remind us. So the first stage is when you are looking for the products. So you use potential, you pro, you use products yeah. database or hunt for products tab. Exactly. So, well, first thing is you choose your marketplace. Um, the, uh, we're going to be launching three more markets shortly, but these are the markets that are, that are, that are, uh, that are live. Uh, India, Mexico, and uh, Italy are going to join this list soon. So you choose your marketplace, and then you have three different approaches. I didn't talk about bestsellers, but that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, you can either hunt by keyword. There's a little. So if you're really not coming up with many ideas, then you can also put in the random words, which just just creates some ideas that get you started. And you'd be surprised at the the how you can find interesting things that that way because um you know you're you're being you're you're not using your pre pre pre-existing uh uh you know ideas of what you're looking for and so the other one is the product database that's like the shortcut approach where you can choose the categories that you're you're um, wanting to research or you um, just choose all of them you can choose uh, the kind of the, some key uh, keywords that you want to to have in there I used meditation um, you can also exclude some things like let's say if you're really not Zen and you don't want meditation you could also put that in there so that nothing can, you know, to do with meditation is there. And these other settings are kind of, they, they're just establishing, you know, how short, how, how strict you want to be. So if you really want to find, and I don't recommend this because it, when you start going to really low BSRs or you start going to really high revenue, you start identifying products that you may have uh, a hard time you know, competing with, um, like Fruit of the Loom underwear or something like that, that, uh, you, you know, it's not really in your, uh, it's, it's not a product that you can really compete in. So you start narrowing down the list. You're going to see the same ones as earlier because those are ones that are particularly, um, you know, perform particularly well. But as you change these categories, you're going to see different results come up. So if you have a good idea of what you want to research al already, you can use the product database as well. Um, but if you're really specific and already know, then you can use Hunt for Products um, to do that. And um, the other thing to note is that for the moment, product database is only available for the US and the UK. We're going to launch it in more markets soon, but we still, you know, this data needs to be fresh. So it's actually a lot of data that we need to accumulate before we can before we can launch it as a as a in in the product database mm -hmm. and the second type of seller is the one who already knows who is selling right so yeah. he would uh, use uh, potential no tracked products right yeah you can go straight to straight to track products and and then you just say i want to track uh, a product category and here you can choose whatever market you want so Let's say, you know, this one was uh, med meditation bowl. And then you put that in there. And the same exercise after that, you add your, you know, you add your, your keywords and that kind of thing. Um, but you, you sort of short, you took a shortcut and you already knew that you were doing this. And th the third scenario is that you actually are already selling in the market. So you, Maybe you uh, were using different tools and you decided to start, you know, using a Maisel. You do the same thing. You you create the product and then once the, the product category or the marketplace, and then you add your product in there um, by going into the, the competitors list and saying that you want to become 
one of the competitors and that in that scenario then you will add your 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 product asin all right and uh, voikan is asking so he says regarding uh, hunting according to bsr if something is marked as high potential product mm -hmm. in your software does it mean mm -hmm. it's a high potential product or a high potential niche market yeah this is this is so the best way to identify or to uh, categorize what it is it is a beacon product that's indicating that there's a marketplace that's interesting for you uh, you could decide to sell something very similar or the same um, like i said before if you sell something exactly the same then you you're kind of you're you're competing in a commodity environment so it's a beacon it's saying this is a product of selling in a marketplace that where it's doing okay it's it doesn't have that many reviews to indicate that it's a really entrenched player um it's doing you know enough sales that it's interesting um and it's worth having a closer look at so it's a it's a representative of a marketplace and it may you know it may be that once you get in there you decide that actually you want to go in a slightly different direction based on that initial uh research um and yeah it's it's really important i think to keep your mind open and and uh, the the product idea that you initially found is just it's just an idea and it may be that you want to do something quite different it may be for example that the only you only want to create this cushion that goes under the the uh, singing bowl maybe that's what you want to uh, maybe that makes more sense to you so um but it's indicating that it's a marketplace where there's demand and there are people playing in it that are not really entrenched so there's an opportunity for you great so let's uh, i think it's a, a lot of things we have covered it's a nice detailed presentation and let's go through the last few questions sure um the pricing uh, can you tell us shortly about the pricing how it is uh, related to different marketplaces does it double the price if you cover different marketplaces and so on sure so we have um three um three plans um the first plan is the starter plan which is free and so if you do hunt for product or tracking for products in the u.s market then it's free uh you have a certain number of keywords that are included and a certain number of uh um uh, auto updates that you can have but otherwise to get started it's free you can play with the app uh, and really you can get a lot of value out of it for free. Um, it sounds like discrimination because we only have the US for free, but our costs are quite a bit higher for other markets. So uh, hunt for products, saving a product to potential products is free for all markets, but for, um, for all the markets other than the US in order to track the product, you, um, you have a choice of, of either the growth subscription or the, um, or the established and in addition to being able to track in those addition uh in these additional marketplaces you also have access to the um, product database for the us and the uk and a higher number of of keywords um and a higher number of of auto uh auto updates so it's you get more of the of the of the features that that i've already showed you uh, depending on the 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 um, the plan, so the the growth plan is starts at ten dollars a month or um, uh, eighty dollars for the year, and the established is uh, twenty nine ninety five and uh, one hundred and ninety nine for the whole year, and the best place to look for that, I'll just go and show you again because it's easier to show than to explain the place to find this is in subscription so you can download install and sign up for free um you you can't actually pay from our from our website you have to be inside the app we don't want to make it too easy for you to pay 
Um, and so you go in here, so uh, click on the Amazel logo and go into subscription, and then you can see the, the options. So what I just explained here. Um, so the free, the growth, and the, and the establish and the pricing. You can switch between the monthly and yearly. Okay, and then what are the features you are planning to release soon? So if someone is subscribing now, and uh, what can they expect? Yeah, so as mentioned, before the end of this week, we're going to have three new marketplaces that are going to go live. So again, uh, saving potential products in those additional markets, Italy, India, and Mexico, is free. But um, the uh, tracking those products and, uh, um, and having uh, access to more keywords is part of the, uh, part of the growth or established plans. So that's the first thing. Second thing is uh, I talked about a little bit that we're going to build out more functionality related to and more data for, um, for you to understand your direct, uh, your closest competitors, which you identify. Uh, over time, you'll start saying, okay, that guy, I want to know what he's doing every day. <laughs> and um, we're going to add more reporting and functionality related to, to being able to track uh, your, your closest competitors. And yeah, the, so relation to that is this reporting component so that um, you will be alerted, for example, when one of your close competitors drops their price significantly. Uh, one of your closest competitors, um, you know, loses a, a loses a position in their in their rating. Um, this kind of information that you'd like to know about the close, you know, the the, the ones who you're competing with uh, most closely on Amazon. Um, yeah. One more question about the. Support, uh, what's the best way for existing users or potential users to reach out? Yeah, so you can you can always get us um, via info at amazel, the email, info at amazel.com. And then um, once you sign up, one thing I failed to mention is that uh, we also have a, a no obligation free trial for the paid features. So you don't give any credit card or anything you just you just uh, sign up and 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 get going uh you can try for 10 days and during that time you will have in-app support and once you're on a uh on a paid subscription so if you have any questions you just you'll have uh you'll be able to type your question in the app and we'll get back to you as soon as we can usually uh within four hours or so that's great support i love it and final question do you have any offer for demo monday viewers definitely um so as a as a special um offer for for the the viewers tonight who have uh managed to listen to everything i said um put in uh on their our subscription page which i just showed you put in uh there's a um, place where you can put the voucher code on the right hand side uh, put in demo Mondays 2017 all caps and uh, you get 10% off of the growth for the yearly um, and 20% off of the established for the uh, established yearly plan great and uh, already someone is saying Joe is saying that uh, uh, he got a uh, growth plan and this video session gave him a lot of nuggets so it's oh that's awesome yeah yeah Great. Thanks a lot, Bob, for being on Demo Mondays. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Sure. And good luck in your business. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.